What is going on, guys? Welcome back to another video with me, Ben Rogjan, aka the Seattle Data Guy. Today, we're going to finally go on part two of my data engineering project video, where in the previous video, if you recall, we extracted data from Predictit, which basically showed uh, all of Predictit's various markets they have set up. And now we're going to take that and insert it into Snowflake. We're then going to do some kind of basic parsing of the JSON files. Uh, and then in the final video, we'll actually do something with that data. So this video is gonna be mostly focused more kind of on the T step, but more on the pre-processing kind of T. Now, if you haven't watched the previous video, I do recommend you go back and look at it, but basically we've set up a MWAA or manage workflows for Apache Airflow on AWS to just pull uh, the data and then insert it into S3. With that, let's just dive in. So before we get too deep into the actual code, let's remember what we're trying to do here. If you recall the data that we've pulled in, there are kind of two different entities that exist, markets and contracts. Markets are essentially the parent information. Um, each market has multiple contracts. And so that's how we want to break down this information. Markets, being one table, and then uh, contracts being the other. For the contract information, we're actually going to track it over time because we want to see the changes that occur on a day-to-day -day basis because that's really where things might get interesting. In order to do that, we're going to again create two tables, a market table and a contract table, and then again, over time, analyze it. In order to do that, we're going to use several Snowflake objects, um, some that are very unique to Snowflake. So for example, we're gonna use uh, stage, we're gonna use tasks, and we're going to use uh, integrations or storage integration. Um, so to be clear, a Snowflake stage essentially allows you to reference uh, data sources um, through your storage integration. So the storage integration is just one way you can kind of deal with uh, the security aspect of it. So you're going to see here, and we're going to go over this in a second, uh, I reference the integration. In theory, you can also reference your API keys, but this is often, I think, considered better practice for Snowflake uh, to mention this storage integration. Now, I've already essentially created this stage and storage integration. Um, for more information on how to do this, I just didn't want to go too deep into it. Uh, I'll put a link below because this can get pretty dry. You're going to have to go into IAM, set up some policies, uh, depending whether you're using AWS, Azure, or so on. Um, so we can kind of just assume that this part is done. We've created this stage. Uh, and now we're going to actually be able to pull information from it. As referenced earlier, this stage is essentially referencing this S3 folder that we have that I've already created. In fact, we can kind of look at it here. I'm querying the information here. And what you'll see is it's got specific files that I've been pulling over the last few days. And on top of that, the data inside. Now, this is very unstructured data. If you recall, this is just the JSON uh, that we pulled from Predictit. And so each file is just one giant blob, so to speak, right? Uh, and we're going to have to parse that out. And that's what we're going to do here. We're going to parse this information out and put that into tables. And then we're going to use tasks to essentially automate that work. So first, let's create a table that we're going to essentially store this information in. So we're just going to create this table for the raw predicted data. So let's run this. We're just going to store that same data you just saw here. And we're going to use this copy into statement you will see it said it's loaded these files and it tells me what files it's loaded. It tells me if there were errors um, and things that are very personally important, like how many rows were loaded. Again, there's really only one row per file, even though there's a lot of entities in each of those files. But here's where Snowflake personally does something that's really great, which is let's run this again. You'll notice zero files were processed at all. And the reason being that Snowflake is already aware that we've loaded these files. I'm gonna put up a quick little documentation about that. Um, basically, it can be aware of this, but this is really great. Honestly, in the past, I definitely had to create systems that just managed this, like kept track of how many rows were loaded, were there errors, and did I even load this file? So you had to create a whole audit system just for that, but in Snowflake, it's all taken care of. So now it just copies into but that's not really automatic, right? Like I just ran that, that was very manual. Yes, the data's there, that's great. You know, we now have data in this table file. So if I query this, we have that same information, which is great, but again, it's not automated. And there are a lot of different ways you can automate this load, but for now, we're just going to use a task. Why I really enjoy Snowflake tasks is because it really is 
this easy. That's all it is. I run basically the same statement. So this is the same copy statement and just have this create task uh, pre-information that kind of tells you what warehouse to use, um, how often to run it. So if you're used to cron, this is basically saying at 2 a.m. run uh, this task. Um, and that's all that's required. So instead of having to set up airflow and everything else, this is kind of nice. Now, that all being said, the things I don't like is when you do start getting into dependencies and tracking and re rerunning uh, tasks, uh, that gets a little more hairy. Like Airflow is definitely nicer or just about any other like orchestration style system because it lets you manage things like backfills. It also gives you a very good UI in terms of tracking what has run and what hasn't. Uh, and most of this is pretty much, you're just gonna have to use SQL to kind of figure out, hey, what's running, what's not running. So let's create this task. Task. But there's one other thing you're going to miss here. So if I hit show tasks, so just show all the tasks that I have, which is just one currently. So you'll see, you know, where's it running, who created it, sysadmin, et cetera, what's the schedule. But if you look at it, its state currently, it's suspended because it's not actually running. So you do need to turn it on um, if you want it to actually run. So I can use this alter task to essentially run it. So now if I go back and show tasks, its state is now started. Now I have this task and it's actually running. This is kind of the first block in our whole diagram of tasks we want to run. First, we want to just load the file. Now we need to process that file into actual tables that we can use. In order to do that, we're going to create two tables. Uh, here's one. I'll have the rest of the code uh, for the next one because it's essentially the same. The query is a little more um, complex because we're querying two nested levels deep versus this one's going to only be one level deep. Um, but you can just see it's got the ID, um, predict its name. So we're going to create this table. Okay, table is created. Now for this stage table, basically what we're going to do is we're going to, again, parse out all this information um, from the JSON. So what you're going to see here is we see this lateral flatten statement that essentially takes the JSON and flattens it by parsing out the specific section we're looking for, which is the market section. So in the like massive blob of JSON, if you remember, markets is one of the key elements. And so here we're essentially parsing it out and making it go row by row for each specific market. And that lets us go even deeper, one level deeper, and now actually go parse JSON again, and now go for the ID for each market, the name for each market, the short name, and the URL. Now, in this case, we kind of want to deduplicate this data. We don't need every market every day. We only want the markets that are essentially new to be inserted into this table. And then from there, we're going to essentially say, hey, we only want to pull out IDs that don't exist currently in staging. We're going to say, hey, let's left join to the stage table. And if the data doesn't exist in that stage table, let's uh, not include it. So from here, we can just say here, if I run this. Here's the data, the header data, if you recall. So it actually tells you, you know, which party will win the election, short name, the URL. Uh, so if I click on this, it will go to uh, this overall URL. Apparently, uh, GOP is ahead. Anyone want to make any bets? Anyway, so now we're going to actually end up inserting this data into the stage table. So I run this. Okay, now we've got all of those uh, inserted. And essentially now we can, so we can take this create task statement here, obviously give it a new name. We can change its name to stage predict it uh, market. And then there's one more thing we need to do. So what we essentially need to do here um, is remove the schedule because we don't need schedule anymore. And instead we can say, go after this task. So that's the way you can create a simple dependency. It's not as visual as Airflow and I don't think it's as nicely set up, um, but as you're just getting started, uh, it can work great. Okay, so now that task is successfully created. Obviously, both those tasks are suspended. So now I need to go here and restart this task. So we start this one, start this one. I guess I could have just run both of those. And then we can look at tasks, show tasks again. And now if we look at this, so one, what you'll see, Oh, did I suspend both? Oh, resume. Resume.
All right, so now both tasks are uh, resumed successfully. I can show tasks. So if we go here, um, you'll see that their state is started and you'll see one has a schedule, one is um, basically dependent on this other task. So it will get kicked off as soon as the previous task runs. So that's the basics here of how you could insert this data. Um, from here, I'm gonna put up the next query that you can kind of use, but it's basically the same thing we just did here. We're going to make it depend on this raw predict and we're gonna have to kind of restart it all over again. Again, just one of those finicky things that I'm not a huge fan of, but that's kind of a great way of just setting up some basic tasks in Snowflake and using things like stage and all these other things and just getting familiar um, with Snowflake and how to pull in data into your tables. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Uh, let me know if you have any questions on this data, because I think from here, we're going to take these tables and we're going to answer some questions with them, maybe um, create a basic dashboard uh, using something like Tableau. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all next time. Thanks and goodbye.